very good afternoon to our honorable guests and alumni ms pallavi shom and mr samit roy chairman vice chairman director dean academics esteemed faculty and staff of four school of management and a special welcome to the students of the batch of 2022 pgdm batch 29 pgdm international business batch 14 pgdm financial management batch 03 and pgdm big data analytics batch 01 i malvika saxena along with my colleague savar sharma students of second year on behalf of four school of management welcome you all to the induction ceremony i would like to begin with the quote of thomas jefferson if you want something you've never had you must be willing to do something you've never done these are exceptional circumstances and we have all come up with innovative ways to live on our lives and so even though we couldn't conduct the ceremony in our traditional way the show must go on in these testing times we have used technology to our advantage to conduct this event sagar and i can vividly recall the time when we were at your place a year ago filled with enthusiasm and excitement to start our journey at four we can say on behalf of our batchmates that the past year has been the most adventurous and enriching experience for all of us every day has been a new challenge and we've learned the importance of hard work and self belief from our esteemed faculties We are delighted to extend a very warm welcome to our new batch of students and all our guests once again. Today, we feel privileged to have amidst us two distinguished alumni gracing the event as our chief guest, Ms. Pallavi Shom, Chief Operating Officer of BNY Mellon Technology in India, and Mr. Samik Roy, Country Head, Modern Workplace, Microsoft India. It is indeed an honor to have you both with us today. and enlighten this evening with your presence along with them in this induction program we also have dr bbl madhukar chairman four school of management dr vinishil gautam vice chairman four school of management dr jitendra k das director four school of management and professor sangamitra budhpriya dean academics four school of management to start the proceeding i would now invite all the dignitaries guests faculties and students to take part in the virtual lighting ceremonial lamp and to bless the students for success in their future endeavors i would request all our guests to please switch on their videos for the ceremony we request everyone joining us through the online platform to also take part in the soulful prayer invoking the almighty After invoking the Almighty, let us begin the program. To start the event, I would like to take the honor to introduce Professor Sangamitra Budhpriya, Dean Academics of Four School of Management, to give the opening remarks for the induction session. Professor Sangamitra Budhpriya is a professor in the area of organizational behavior and human resource management. She has more than 23 years of experience in research, management, education, training, and consulting. She is a PhD from Faculty of Management Studies, University of Delhi, and did her postdoctoral research from McMaster University, Canada. To her credit, she has authored two books, presented papers in many national and international conferences, and her research papers are published in many reputed national and international journals. Professor Sangamitra has successfully designed and conducted management development programs across managerial levels. for leading public and private sector organizations in 2019 she received the prestigious women in leadership award by the world educational congress may i now request professor budhpriya to begin the proceedings good afternoon all of you honorable uh, chairman of four school of management dr bbl madhukar Vice Chairman Dr. Vineshal Gautam, Director Dr. Jitendra Das, our distinguished alumni, 
Mr. Samik Roy, uh, Country Head, Modern Workplace, uh, Microsoft India, and Ms. Pallavi Show, Chief Operating Officer, Bank of New York Mellon Technology in India, esteemed faculty members, staff members, members of the Student Council, and my dear students. It gives me immense pleasure to welcome you all to this induction ceremony of the Postgraduate Diploma in Management Batch 29, PGTM in International uh, Business Batch uh, 14, uh, PGTM in Financial Management Batch uh, 3, and PGTM uh, uh, in Big Data Analytics, uh, our new batch of students. I especially welcome to this uh, students of uh, PGTM Big Data Analytics because being the new batch, they all will be very special to us. I extend a very hearty and warm welcome to all of you to this induction program. And uh, so we follow the practice of inviting our distinguished alumni uh, in this induction programs to address our students and to also inspire them. And uh, we are glad that today uh, Mr. Samikra and Ms. Pallavi Shom, they are here with us. I uh, extend a special warm welcome to both of them. We are thankful to both of you uh, being uh, participating in this particular event. Uh, uh, let me begin with uh, the uh, current scenario. Uh, the ongoing pandemic has uh, created an unprecedented uh, situations all over the world. Uh, most of these uh, industries have been adversely impacted by it. And uh, however, many industries have also been managing things differently and trying to adopt innovative ways uh, to deal with the situations. Uh, many academic institutions are also been affected by it. Uh, but uh, like uh, institutions, those who are having a pragmatic and innovative approach have dealt with, uh, with the situations well. We at Ford School of Management, we have been trying to use the best available technology for managing all our academic activities, be it is classroom teaching, uh, assessment, evaluation, examinations, or our uh, like uh, books, library, etc. Oh, we would like to, like at four school of management, we always uh, kind of strive to impart uh, uh, education, quality education and want to maintain uh, like high academic rigor. And we also offer courses which are industry relevant. Our faculty members are highly qualified, competent and also they are committed. Uh, they uh, would definitely take you through the uh, like uh, contemporary topics, the newer developments that have been uh, taking place in the industries. So also the newer uh, methods of teaching and learning. Uh, here I would like to emphasize on the fact that uh, at Four School of Management, we always try to keep our course curriculum updated. We have a very well laid out uh, uh, system of uh, uh, revising our core curriculum and uh, like which are industry relevant and we also engage uh, uh, many industry experts uh, in this activity and uh, this uh, particular activity helps us in enhancing the students uh, industry readiness. In this two years program uh, we not only kind of focus on imparting knowledge but also uh, uh, emphasize on uh, enhancing the managerial uh, skills as well as the leadership skills of uh, our students. Our curriculum, our pedagogy, our assessments are designed in such a way that students uh, ability, uh, various abilities like your critical thinking, analytical ability, decision making abilities, interpersonal skills, communication skills, leadership abilities, team spirit, and managing things in stressful environment are well taken care of. And uh, so, so uh, this is about our curriculum part, but we always emphasize on our, the holistic development of our students. So we emphasize on the co-curricular and extracurricular activities. Uh, so we, uh, our students have been participating in various uh, extracurricular and co-curricular activities 
and various competitions that have been organized by leading business schools of uh, India. And I must take the pride to share with you in the last academic years, our students have uh, brought many glories by uh, winning uh, more than 70 competitions all over uh, India uh, held by uh, the prominent uh, institutions of India like I am Ahmedabad, I am Lucknow, I am uh, Ranchi, I am uh, Trichy, I am Rohtak, uh, then IIT Mumbai, IIT Khadakpur, IIT Kanpur and then uh, MDI, SRCC, XLRI to name a few institutions. Under the able guidance of our uh, chairman, uh, our vice chairman and our director uh, and with the contribution of our faculty members and staff members who have been trying to uh, make our students industry ready. But here I would like to insist on one important aspect. Even the institute is trying uh, to uh, like provide uh, all kinds of supports and facilitates which can facilitate learning and development. But here the, I would like to insist that the owners lies with the students. And uh, uh, so uh, for the for uh, for uh, like uh, uh, imparting like for their own learning and development, they have to take uh, 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 largely they should be responsible and their desire to learn their uh, accountability, their commitment and hard work can only give them uh, success. And uh, we help them in building a career of their choice. Uh, you may be apprehensive about the fact uh, about our online classes. Uh, of course, online classes require more focus as well as you need to be more attentive. But uh, I must assure you that with the support of our learned faculty, our dedicated academic office, our committed IT team, your experience is going to be good in our online teaching. Uh, I, at the end, I would like to share with you that we very much miss our students in the campus and I wish our students should, uh, things should get normal, our students should uh, get back to the campus uh, as soon as possible and make uh, the campus uh, lively. Uh, I wish you all the best for your uh, like two years program at Poor School of Management and I would uh, also wish that you best utilize your time at Poor School of Management. Uh, I wish you and your family uh, members good health, stay safe and stay healthy. This is from my side. Thank you. Thank you all of you. Thank you, ma'am, for addressing the batch with such meaningful insights and allaying our fears for the uh, times to come. Before I invite Dr. Das, our director, to give a welcome address <coughs> and like a brief introduction about him. Dr. Jitendra K. Das, director for School of Management, New Delhi, has been a professor of marketing and the founder dean Noida campus of IIM Lucknow. With a B.Tech and M.Tech both from IIT Delhi and a doctorate from the University of Toronto, he has to his credit many national and international publications. His total years of experience is over 38 years. He has been a consultant to the World Bank, IDRC Canada, GWB for GTC Germany, Coal India Limited, Globecast India, a division of France Telecom, various ministries of the Government of India and a member of few policy committees of the Government of India. In academics, he has been associated with teaching at IIM Ahmedabad, Cozy Court and Lucknow and at Danube Business School, Danube University, Krems, Austria. Dr. Das has received numerous awards and honors. To name a few, in February 2020, he received the Certificate of Excellence and the award for Leader in Asia with Global Vision and Outlook in the third Asia-Pacific Education and Technology Awards 2020, organized jointly by ASOCHAMP, Education Post, and Knowledge Chamber of Commerce and Industry at Ahmedabad. In December 2017, he was felicitated as a visionary edu leader of India by Sri Pranam Mukherjee, the Education President of India, during Rethink India, the Fifth Estate, National Convention of Edu Leaders and Edupreneurs in Higher Education held at Delhi. In January 2017, he also received the award of one of Asia's 50 Greatest Leaders 2016 in the Indo-Singapore Business Congress, organized by Asia One Magazine and URS Media Consulting Private Limited at Singapore. He has also been a recipient of the India Education Excellence Award for outstanding contribution to leadership development by worldwide achievers and headlines today at New Delhi. 
He has also been honored with the Best Director Award in the Asian Education Leadership Awards 2013 at Dubai. Now, may I request our Director Sir, Dr. Jitendra K. Das, to please deliver the welcome address. Sir, please unmute yourself. Hello, sir, please unmute yourself. Okay, okay. Uh, thank you, uh, Malvika. Our two very successful and uh, distinguished uh, alumni, uh, Pallavi Shom, she is the Chief Operating Officer for Bank of New York, Camelon. Uh, she is from the 1993-95 batch and also Mr. Samik Roy, who is the country head uh, modern workplace Microsoft India. He is from the 1995-97 uh, batch. Our chairman, Dr. BBL Madhukar. Our vice chairman, Dr. Vineshwil Gautam. Uh, Dean Academics, uh, Professor Sangmitra Buddhapriya. Uh, members of the uh, faculty. Uh, students of the uh, new batch uh, joining us today. Uh, it's my uh, privilege to be with you this afternoon to jointly uh, welcome the new students uh, today. Uh, it has been our uh, tradition to invite uh, two distinguished uh, alumni to uh, be with us uh, in this inaugural function to address uh, our new students. Uh, we have a very important uh, uh, purpose here, uh, which essentially is that we would want to uh, have our uh, distinguished alumni come and talk to our students and be a source of uh, inspiration uh, to them. Uh, this year we have invited uh, two very well-known uh, alumni, uh, both very successful in their own right and been in the industry for over 25 years. Uh, so. We want to uh, ensure when a student joins uh, our program for two years uh, that you are able to meet your uh, life objectives to begin with. Because we understand that when a student is wanting to do a MBA program or what you call the PGDM program, uh, by and large, they have one very important uh, objective in their mind, uh, which is to be very happy and successful in life. Uh, we are only an instrument for the students uh, to fulfill their uh, uh, life goals. So we do what we can do best, but at the same time, the students uh, must also do their part to be able to achieve what they want to achieve. Uh, we are also very much uh, uh, appreciative of the effort uh, uh, put in by the students to score well in various uh, examinations and do well in the selection process uh, to join uh, uh, for School of Management, particularly in a time where the uh, lockdown is uh, commonplace, the world is going through upheavals, the industries are you know, going through uh, uh, ups and downs. Uh, there are a lot of uh, uncertainties in the industry, in the country, in the world. Uh, we have been able to put our things together and uh, we have uh, commenced our program as uh, planned uh, and as scheduled uh, today for the new batch uh, uh, from uh, this uh, for the three four sections we have uh, the uh, fmg batch uh, starting today we have the international business batch and we have the financial management batch and we have a new batch starting from today uh, we call it pgdm uh, uh, business uh, uh, Big Data Analytics, BDA. Uh, uh, so when you come and join Four School of Management, uh, you have to understand that while we are trying to deliver what we designed to deliver to you, uh, you need to be very aware of your role in this entire uh, uh, schema of things. Uh, we try to put in 
certain activities together to enhance your skill and capability to a level that you are able to do well in the selection process. Ultimately, at the end of a year and a half, and by the completion of two years, when you uh, leave the uh, institution, uh, you are in a well-placed uh, organization and trying to uh, fulfill your uh, life dreams at uh, these states. So as Professor Sangmitra, Dean Academics already said that we have a very strong uh, uh, and process driven curriculum updation program. Uh, we give uh, very high emphasis to the preparedness of the uh, faculty because it is the faculty who do certain things with you in the classroom and outside the classroom such that you are able to uh, understand and upskill yourself uh, to a level that you are found suitable by the recruiters and uh, more skillful, more clear you are in terms of what you have to do, uh, better off you are in terms of uh, showcasing yourself to a potential recruiter uh, in about a year and year and a half from now. Uh, and by the time you pass out, you are able to achieve what you set out to achieve for yourself. Now to give you a brief understanding of what we do here, we broadly know that uh, in education, there are these uh, three uh, components which are part of um, uh, higher education particularly. Uh, one is standard, we call it curriculum, which is in the classroom based uh, instructions and teaching that is done. Uh, then there is this extra curriculum, which is um, uh, uh, outdoor or indoor, uh, which we also have. We have a third component here. We call it co-curricular uh, activities. Traditionally, we invite people from the uh, industry, the CXOs from the industry to come and talk to the students and share their views and understanding uh, to share uh, case uh, examples. And that's where a lot of learning for students happen. But we also have understood um, in the last few years that uh, even this may not be sufficient for students to uh, learn fully as to how to be uh, better perceived by the recruiters. So what we do is we have configured uh, a seminar course. The seminar course uh, is a series of lectures which is configured by the students or by the faculty and essentially aimed at uh, filling the gap of uh, those parts of the curricular uh, components which cannot be covered in the classroom. This classroom has a limitation of uh, uh, 30 hours to a course and you can't exceed that. Uh, so uh, the faculty may feel like uh, you know, in giving little more input so they can uh, do that through a lecture, through a uh, panel discussion, through a workshop or through a seminar and it is open to students. So students can choose uh, whatever part of this uh, seminar course that they are uh, uh, interested in. So uh, this is how we also try to uh, beef up the additional learning that is required uh, for a student uh, to enhance uh, her or his own uh, skill sets so that they are able to do it. So we do our best and we are by and large an open system. Uh, we uh, seek feedback from students. Uh, we give feedback to students. So you are always welcome to suggest anything and everything. And if it is found suitable, we do uh, strive very hard to implement those uh, uh, new initiatives. Now we have a, a set of rules. Now as of now, uh, everything seems to be online and soon we may have a hybrid classes where uh, some of the students may be sitting in the classroom and uh, some of the remaining students may be attending the classes um, online and then we can rotate uh, this uh, set of students so that everyone gets to sit in the classroom. As of now, it's all online and we all understand that uh, in a uh, uh, teaching, it is the uh, learning experience and the uh, ability to interact with the instructor is where the uh, core of the learning experience uh, lies. Uh, if uh, this was not so, uh, a lot of these online courses which have been available for uh, many decades now, uh, they would have come uh, center stage, but they could not uh, come center stage because of uh, the essentially, as I see it, a lack of ex learning experience <coughs> that couldn't be offered in those online courses. So what we have done here, we given the technological limitations and uh, what all can be done, we have tried to maximize uh, the learning experience of our students. So essentially the faculty would uh, take classes uh, from the classroom uh, with an interactive uh, whiteboard 
uh, and uh, all the students are uh, uh, on the video and the audio and then uh, the Q&A can happen live. Uh, so uh, the physical absence of physical proximity uh, that may lead to a lack of uh, understanding, uh, we have tried to uh, uh, minimize or eliminate. So we are trying to do all these uh, things in the classroom. So we have deployed uh, technology uh, solutions appropriately and we're also working at uh, configuring our classrooms for a hybrid classroom uh, in, in, in a real sense. Uh, even as of now, one can do a hybrid class, uh, but then there will be some gaps in terms of uh, the learning experience that I was talking of. So soon we will have hybrid classes where uh, uh, one can do a physical as well as online classes uh, simultaneously. So this is how we are trying to put things uh, together and as a learning, experience. So one of the very important element, particularly from the uh, placement uh, point of view, which is very important uh, for a student pursuing an MBA program, is what we call the uh, summer internship uh, and the international immersion program that we have. So uh, given the lockdown situation, uh, as of now, the travels are prohibited, but I'm sure uh, we will have uh, things uh, easing out uh, in a couple of months time and then the international travel can happen, should happen. Uh, we will restore the uh, the uh, IIP for the current uh, secondary students and hope, I'm sure by the time the new students who go into the second year, uh, things should have eased out um, almost completely and you should be able to seamlessly experience the international uh, immersion program that we offer to our students. Uh, coming back to the uh, summer internship, this is a very important element of uh, learning where uh, the classroom learnings are practiced in a uh, uh, online environment uh, in the current times and a real uh, factory or a workshop or a office visit uh, through summer internship. So this is a very important involved activity that we would uh, carry out. Uh, this time we were able to do it only online mm -hmm. and I'm very happy to say that uh, our students were fully engaged uh, in an online environment, including uh, data collection and carrying out research. Uh, through an online situations and we had a special sessions uh, to let students know how these uh, activities can be done um, online including data collection and uh, I was told that uh, out of all the reports uh, which have been submitted we are uh, targeting at least uh, 20 or so uh, reports which can be converted into a publishable papers that shows the intensity and commitment that our students have uh, shown and I'm sure this will pay rich dividends to these students uh, once it comes to the uh, uh, placement time. So we have, uh, you know, all all these aspects uh, and the, the the rules regulations captured in a student handbook, which would have been shared with the uh, new students joining today. So all the new students are urged to uh, go through this uh, handbook very carefully and uh, be make uh, very yourself very familiar with um, do's and don'ts, and then you would be very happy here. We'll also be very happy with you. Um, uh, if any uh, action gets taken against a student for any uh, shortcomings, it is covered in the uh, student handbook. If it is not covered in the student handbook, then the benefit of doubt is given to the student and then you don't have to worry about it. So it is best to become fully aware of do's and don'ts uh, when you are uh, doing classes or coursework uh, with us for the uh, next uh, two years. And I personally is always available to student. My primary task is to ensure that you have a very satisfying experience uh, and that's what I do all the time. So in case uh, you want to see me, you any of the student wants to see me, you don't have to take any permission or appointment. You can walk into my office and if I'm there and available, I would be uh, more than happy to talk to you. Uh, else you can always schedule a meeting. In an online situation, you can always send a mail to me and I will try my best to respond to you or I can send it across to the relevant uh, team or uh, office to quickly uh, get back to you. So do not hesitate to uh, let me uh, uh, to tell me anything that you uh, feel like because you have equal role in making your experience uh, meaningful here as we have in making your uh, being with us uh, meaningful. So we have to work together to uh, make a win-win situation and I'm sure we'll be able to ensure that you have a very satisfying and fulfilling experience 
uh, from now until you pass out from here. And post uh, graduate, after you pass out post graduation, uh, we will continue to be in touch uh, through the alumni affairs and activities. And I wish you all the best and uh, the best of time and best of learning time uh, at Ford School of Management and a very successful life and career after you complete our uh, program of two years here. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir, for the wonderful welcome and all the information that you share to our future managers. Now we will move forward to the induction oath. I request all the students of the new batch to join director, sir, for the oath. Please open your in induction oath in front of you. Over to you, sir. Uh, all students, the new joining students will repeat uh, after me uh, as I read. And uh, since this is uh, visible to you on the screen, so you can read them uh, after I have read. I, as a student of Ford School of uh, Management, I, as a student of Ford School of Management, take the following oath on my induction to the program. Take the following oath on the induction to the program on postgraduate diploma in management. On postgraduate diploma in management. I shall place the honor, dignity, and interest. I shall place the honor, dignity, and interest of my country above myself. Of my country above myself. I shall conduct myself with diligence and decorum. I, I shall, shall conduct, conduct myself, myself with, with diligence, diligence and decorum to enhance the prestige and reputation of the four school of management. To enhance the prestige and reputation of the four school of management. I shall strive my best to learn skills. I shall strive my best to learn skills. Acquire knowledge and develop attitudes. Acquire knowledge and develop attitudes with a view to excel in life with a view to excel in life and contribute my best to the business world and, and contribute my best to the business world. I shall cultivate a quality of mind. I, I shall cultivate a quality of mind which enriches the values of love, which enriches the value of love, compassion, hard work, truth, beauty and goodness. Compassion, hard work, truth, beauty and goodness. I shall strive my best to be responsive. I, I shall strive my best to be responsive to the needs of the society, to the needs of the society, and be a good citizen of my country. And be a good citizen of my country. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, everyone. I would now like to introduce our honorable chairman, Dr. BBL Madhukar and invite him to address the new batch. Dr. BBL Madhukar is the chairman of Ford School of Management, New Delhi. He has been the member of governing body of Ford for over 25 years. He is also on the board of several other business schools, such as New Delhi Institute of Management and Institute of Management Studies, Ghaziabad. In addition to this, Dr. Madhukar is the director general at BRICS Chamber of Commerce and Industry, New Delhi, he is the chairman of School of Aviation, Science and Technology, a unit of Delhi Flying Club established in 1928. He is working as a consultant and provide advice to corporate houses in the areas of law, finance, international business and human resource development. Dr. Madhukar has held numerous professional assignments, including CMD of two government, central government enterprises, and board member of several public sector and private sector companies like MMTC Limited, MITCO, PEC Limited, HMT Limited, MTPL Singapore, Nilchan Ispat Nigam Limited, Eagle Flash Industry Limited, and many others. He has worked as a senior manager in the State Bank of India, and prior to this, he has worked as a lecturer in the university for four years, teaching postgraduate students. A brief about his education, Dr. Madhukar studied management at Henley Management College in England, one of the best business schools of Europe. During this period, he has also attached with the London School of Economics. 
being a gold medalist both in MA economics as well as in LLB and a PhD holder. He has excelled in all his professional endeavors. He is a fellow of the Institute of Engineering and a CAIIB from Indian Institute of Bankers. One can see his passion in the in the as he is the president of Delhi Flying Club, which is an iconic institute in the domain of aviation industry. Over the years, Dr. Madhukar has visited over 60 countries in connection with export trade and industrial collaborations. He has worked as an expert in international business with the United Nations and successfully completed a UN project on trade among SARS countries. He has awarded to be the best CEO of the year and also a Udyogradan. May I please request Chairman Sir to address the batch. Sir, please unmute yourself. Is it okay? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Perfectly. Okay. All right. Okay. So, dear Professor Das, the director of the institute, Vice Chairman Dr. Vinayshil Gotham, Professor Sangmitra, who is the dean, and all of their esteemed professors and members of the faculty of for School of Management, including all the members of the staff who may be listening to this program. I'm sure that today is a very special day in by all reckoning because we have not only new students joining us, but also a new batch, new subject altogether, which is being introduced from this year at this college. That is postgraduate diploma in management in big data analytics. Big data analytics, as you must be all knowing, that this is a subject which is now come to come to dominate the world. But a part of this big data analytics and a part of machine learning and artificial intelligence will also be delivered to other students who, as well who would be studying management in different areas because this is inevitable. But on behalf of Paul School of Management, we welcome all the new students and assure their parents who have in who have agreed to invest in them, invest in them to pursue this kind of study at this place. Four School of Management is an iconic institution. Iconic because it is one such institution in the whole country, which has been established, founded, and being run by a group of professionals. There is no single individual who can be said to be the promoter or the owner or in any way uh, the person who dictates. Therefore, it's a very democratic organization, and we are we, we are governed by rules of ethics and decorum and responsibility. A time has come now because of the compulsions imposed by a pandemic prevailing today in the world that we need to speak instead of mouth to mouth, we are speaking mouth to mouth. So this development has happened because we can't meet physically and then we can exchange notes more, more, uh, more in a more real sense. But nevertheless, I'm very happy to, to inform you that this new batch of yours I mean, the batch which is joining us today comprise of students from as many as 22 states of India. This is a very, 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 very happy thing. 
because I can see that if these students come from different different states of India, they represent diverse cultural and ethnic identity of India. Such cross-cultural exchange will not only foster a wholesome exchange and interaction of knowledge and ideas. It will also enhance good amount of networking because as we all know, your net worth is known by the network that you have. So networking is very, very important. If students feel that, you know, their classmates and friends who have undergone study together for a period of about two years are stationed in different parts of the country, they have such relations and contacts in all these parts and which will be very useful in the life journey. MBA education as such is not a simple acquisition of degree. It is an education where skill is being transmitted to you. You acquire a skill to know how to manage institutions, how to manage companies, how to manage any 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 entity which you may be leading in the course of time teaches you such techniques. Good times and bad times are part of life. COVID-19 has brought about such great miseries that many people have lost jobs. Many people are suffering from such ailments and hospitalization that's causing panic, that's causing all kinds of, you know, distress. In this difficult time, you have to face the situation boldly. And this is also one more experience, one more learning that, you know, that makes you more mature and perfect. How to manage success is being taught in the schools and colleges. How to achieve success is being taught in business schools also. But how to how to manage adversities or difficult time and risk management, all these things are another side of the coin which needs to be catered to. In times of distress, you must know how to manage the crisis. Disasters happen. There are natural disasters also happening like tsunami or earthquake or floods and things of that kind. Think of, of things are like things of this kind, they do take place. But preparing to face such adversities, it is a, it is a skill which has to be developed. The Japanese children are taught right in the very childhood that in the event of earthquake, in the event of tsunami, which is very often visited, they are they are told you know how to keep your first aid box ready, how to keep your handy things handy in a small pack of uh, pack, packet so that in the event of emergency you don't have to look around to find where i will get my torch where i'll get my water bottle where i will get my other things to cope with the uh, calamity so such things are being taught they are in japanese uh, you know in, in japan so they are better prepared to face such d uh, difficult times we have also to prepare ourselves to manage both the situations, you know, which is a, uh, you know, which is an important uh, element of life, both bad and good. So therefore, you know, we ha will have to teach now such skills as well, which we have so far not been able to give in value and importance. And my only condition, my only submission is that with the passage of time, you will need to develop more confidence, agility, and preparedness for managing difficult situations. 
Now, smartness is another side of the of the uh, aspect of management education. If you become smart, that means you will be able to face and manage situations and which will be appreciated by the employer or you it will also come handy for you when you manage your own enterprise. And this comes only through your developing the soft skills. Hard skills are those which are taught in the textbooks, through the textbooks. But the soft skills are those which have to be acquired over a period of time. You have to learn the art of speaking, learn the art of communication, learn how, learn to, learn how to communicate on telephone uh, conversation, how to communicate through your writings, how do you, how is your, what is your body language, what, how the eyes communicate, every organ of yours communicates something. You have to master the art so that it, it uh, makes somebody impressed. They feel good about you. They feel that when you come, you greet the person properly. These manners, good manners, your humility, your everything, which are associated parts of your life, you know, is, is also equally important. I will not take much of your time. I only uh, wish you all the best in this institution. I'm sure the uh, the faculty that we have is a is a very very distinguished one. They are handpicked from all parts of the country, and they will certainly give you the best. That is why we find that poor school, despite all the difficult times now, has stood up and will be able to face these uh, difficult times and will be able to also uh, deliver good results to the students who are now joining us. Even placement is, is something which is always our priority. We'll see to it that you are not only placed well in the companies, but make, your, make you so much accomplished that you can start your own, own enterprise. We'll be coming up with several projects by which you can be you can be good startups, you can be you can be a good entrepreneur, and you will not be looking for employment, but rather you will be giving employment. So this is how you have to develop your own value and skill so as to uh, be an accomplished person. Wish you all the all the best and happy journey with Four School of Management. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for your kind advice and words of encouragement. It is our honor now to introduce you all to our distinguished alumnus and chief guest, Mr. Samik Roy. Mr. Roy leads Microsoft Modern Workplace in India, which includes the productivity platforms of Microsoft Office, Windows, as well as enterprise mobility and security. He assumed this role from July 2018 and leads strategy and execution um, for the entire suite of Microsoft Modern Workplace products in India. Prior to this, Mr. Roy was country head of Microsoft Dynamics. He designed and executed go-to-market strategy for Microsoft Dynamics across all market segments, industry verticals, products, and partners, and catapulted the business to great levels of success. Before joining Microsoft, Mr. Roy worked with Oracle for 11 years, serving over the years as head of CRM business, head of banking and financial applications business, and head of the mid-market applications business. In addition to this, Mr. Roy serves on the board of EmployWise, one of the most successful HR product companies, which is making employee hiring, onboarding, and workplace HR processes more efficient. With nearly 25 years of experience spanning multiple functions, industry, and geographies, Mr. Samik brings deep knowledge, innate understanding of customers, and a rare finesse to everything he does. He has been a leader in CRM, ERP, collaboration and digital transformation across verticals like BFSI, distribution, retail, and more. By combining skills like strategy, execution, and strong people management, Mr. Samik turned around businesses and made his mark in India, Singapore, and Malaysia. Mr. Roy has a graduate degree from Delhi University and an MBA from the Ford School of Management, New Delhi. May we now request Mr. Samik Roy to please deliver his address. Thank you for the introduction. I think that introduction was very, very big. Um, I do hold three positions and very frankly, 
while I was trying to think about what to present today, one side of me said that I should talk about what these organizations look like. And I'm sure so many of you would love to know what one of the greatest organizations on the planet, Microsoft, looks like, what it thrives for, how do we work, um, and things like that. But the other side of me told me, uh, why don't I encapsulate some aspects which I learned in my last 27 years and share it with you. And that's what I want to go, go and do today. So I'll break my presentation into two parts. The 10 minutes is about a few snippets that I would leave behind for all of you. And the last five minutes, I'll talk about what should you look forward to and what should you learn in, in Ford School of Management. I loved what Dr. said before, that there is theory and there is a lot of practicals. And he mentioned certain aspects like the way you talk, the way you see, the way you write, everything makes a difference and everything will help you stand out and make a difference. And that's the title of my presentation today. So let me start. You know, when I was a child, I read this book called Jonathan Livingston Siegel. It's by an author called Richard Park. I don't know whether you have read this book and it's a pretty old one. But when I read this book, I learned one thing very early and which was about following your passion and following your heart. And why am I saying this? It's extremely important. We all earned this life, a beautiful life, the highest form of creation that we can think about because we have the ability to think, we have the ability to communicate. My first guiding principle would be follow your heart and follow your passion to the fullest. Follow your dreams. I'm sure each one of you have a dream because of the reason you have come to four and the dreams that you see ahead. There are two reasons I'm saying this. You know, I, I go and do many campus recruitments, top notch institutes, the who's who wants to join Microsoft. And I'm sure you read the newspapers last week, Microsoft was India's most admired company to join. It, it just came out last week. And during the interview, I asked many people, why are you doing what you're doing? What do you want to do in five years and 10 years? Mm -hmm. And their answers are very different from what they're doing. And I asked them the question, if you want to do X, then why are you doing Y? And after a, per after a certain point in time, I realized that the person is actually trying to satisfy the happiness or the dreams of someone else. Don't do that. Follow your own dreams, follow your own passions. It's very, very important because you got this life, live it to the fullest. The second aspect I would talk about is get ready to get your hands dirty, right? Many people join an MBA and say, okay, I'll become a manager. I'll have people working for me. I'll be guiding them. You know, I'll be giving them instructions, whatever thought process you have. But unless you get into the trenches, unless you get your hands dirty, you won't build a strong foundation for yourself. If you look at many of the leaders of the world, look at some of the leaders of India. Okay? Mr. Ratan Tara started from the shop floor. Sri Birchmur Lal Munjalji, who owns, who owned and now his son owns the largest two wheeler motorbike company in the world started in a bicycle shop. Our founder, Bill Gates, dropped out of school and college and went into and started things from the garage. Apple, Steve Jobs did the same. It's about getting your hands dirty. Because when you do that, you actually know what happens when the rubber hits the ground, which makes you a very good manager and a very good leader at certain point in time. Right? If I have to buy ammunition and artillery and try to create a strategy, what, what happens in a line of control? I should at least know what the line of control should look like. What's the temperature out there? Okay, which way is the wind blowing? Which way should you attack? I can't be doing that sitting in a boardroom. So get ready to, to go down to, to the ground and get your hands dirty. The third aspect I would talk about is, and, and, and the previous speaker also spoke about it, always be ready to think differently. Don't be scared. Don't be thinking that because X has happened for so many years, 
because something is being done in a particular way for so many years. That's the way you should move forward. And the reason I put this slide, it's one of my favorite slides. If any of you thought that Thomas Alva Edison made the bulb because he was thinking of how to make the candle better, you are seriously mistaken. He started making the bulb because he had a radically different idea and he was not thinking of how to make the candle better. He was thinking of how to create and innovate and implement something which is new. And I can give you many examples. Just go back 20 years ago. The world was was governed by a mobile phone company called Nokia. Everybody had a Nokia. Outstanding company. I still have a lot of regards and value for the company. Till one smart person came out with an iPhone and it just changed the entire world. And it took so many years for Nokia to come back to the market again. There was that time, if you remember, there were CD mans and Walkmans. That was the way people used to listen to the music. Till the time an iPod was invented and then it was history of iPods all the way for a long period of time. So it's about thinking differently. And it's very important for all of you people who are joining for to learn that art of thinking differently. In this whole process, you will have failures and you've got to learn to fail as much as you learn to succeed. And this is just an example of one of the finest presidents of United Kingdom uh, of United States, Abraham Lincoln. But look at the number of losses, the number of defeats he had almost in every aspect of his life, whether it was his job, whether it was his better half, whether it was his state of mind, whether, whether it was the floor of the Congress, he almost lost everything. But he came up to become one of the finest presidents when he got elected in 1860. And he will have many examples like this. So whenever you fall, remember that's not a failure. That's also a success because you will learn something from it. So get up again and start running. Just the way in childhood, when you were trying to walk and you fell down, somebody picked you up and you started walking again. And remember, this will happen. This person is one of my, my idols and I talk about him a lot. And there are two reasons I'm showing this particular slide today. The first reason is again about failure. If you look at his entire history today, the reason I love him is not because of the startup, but because what he went through and he still stands strong. You know, if you if you, we all heard about the fact that he was deject, rejected by All India Radio saying that he doesn't have a voice. He came in, he had struggling times. Then he got into all of these activities of Bofors and a number of deals. And then he tried politics where, where again he, he struggled. Then he moved into running his own company, which is ABCL, and he went into massive amount of debts. And he tried to come back into movies and the movies won't take him back because he has lost, lost the image of the angry young man till the time he got KBC. And then he came back and see where he stands today. That's the first reason I, I, I spoke about this. It's about failure and success coming together. But the second reason I want to talk about is growth mindset. He constantly innovated himself. He was constantly learning from his mistakes. He realized that the era of his angry young man had gone and he had to come back and have a different image. People at that point of time used to question his versatility, but look at his versatility today. Whether it's Pa, whether it's Bhutnath, whether it's pink, they are completely different, or whether it's black, completely different styles he has adopted. And just compare this, compare him, with one more stardom of his time, Rajesh Khanna, a phenomenon, a phenomenon. He was an industry within himself, but he never changed. He just continued to keep his romantic lover boy image, but this person changed and look who stands the test of time today. So my theory in this is it's very important to innovate every single day and learn and grow. I say this very often. Let's say you're on the hundredth day in an organization. Ask yourself the question. Am I playing the first test match the hundredth time? Or am I playing the hundredth test match the first time? If you are playing the first test match the hundredth time, 
you have wasted your time. But if you are playing the hundredth test match the first time, you have really done justice because you have made every test match different from what you played previously. So that's an important aspect. Get up from, from bed every single day, chasing your dream and say, am I better than what I was a day before? And what did I learn? The other aspect is about this. You know, the present comes from the past and the future will come from the present. Many people either live in the past or try to live in the future. But to build your future, that's again your dreams, your aspirations, the reason for which you have joined for, you've got to get your present right. You know, many people come up and say, I want to be the CEO. I want to be the manager. I want to be the, the GM running this business. Brilliant. I love that aspect. But 90% of the people make this mistake. They start putting their mind and they start focusing their attention on that road and what they will do when they are there. But they will only get to that role when you make your present role very good. So whatever you're doing, small, big, medium, doesn't matter, but do that job extremely well. Do it so well that people say, oh my God, whenever I have the next bigger job, I'm going to give it to this particular person. It's extremely important. So don't spend your time thinking about what you will do when you are somewhere because you will not reach that place till you get your present right and it's extremely important. My final slide and then I will go to what you should learn in core and you can clearly make out that this is an that he is my idol. I picked this up from the movie Mohabbate in which he was one of the principles and used to talk about three principles. I changed those principles to principles of career, which is the three D's which I have learned dedication, discipline and determination. Unless you have these three ingrained in your DNA and culture, you will come to success probably, but that success will be short lived. So in order to continue to be successful and rise higher and higher and higher above, you need to push yourself in these three aspects, dedication, discipline and determination. Now, what do we learn in four? That's my last five minutes. The first thing I'll talk about, what, what I believe, is a pillar of success consists of four pillars for me. Success. The first is the will to do something. The second is the chance to do something. The third is a knowledge to do something. And the fourth is fate. So leave the fate one out because you can't manage it. You want to go fate, don't go to four, go to an astrologer. But in four, get that third pillar right, which is the knowledge to do something. You know, you will learn a plethora of things. I learned so many things in four, which I did not learn in NIT, which I did not learn in my graduation. And of course, I didn't learn in my school. And you just be a sponge and keep absorbing it. Don't challenge it. Keep absorbing it because all that knowledge will come handy at some point of time. For those of you who are working or who will be working soon, right? Use that knowledge and bring it to practicality. Every time you learn something, think about how do I apply this knowledge and test it out. Then you will actually do a lot of justice to what you're being taught in for, as well as a lot of justice that you're doing in, 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 in your jobs. The other aspect is this. A lot of the people live their entire life in that comfort zone because it is a comfort zone. It is a zone where we don't want to get out of it because immediately outside that zone is a discomfort zone, which is called as a fear zone. But a comfort zone is not a zone for success. The further you go from a comfort zone, the more successful you, you will be because you're enriching your own self. Remember, are you playing the first test match the hundredth time? Are you playing the hundredth test match the first time? If you are in that comfort zone, you'll be playing the first test match X number of times till you retire. You won't go ahead, right? You'll read somewhere, but you won't go ahead. Always remember this principle. A butterfly is born because the caterpillar pushed itself out of the cocoon. So you're going to push yourself out of the comfort zone. Comes back the three principles, dedication, determination, and, and, and discipline. 
The second thing I would like you all to learn is the attention to details and every small thing matters. This is just a glimpse from the Mahabharat. I'm sure you all could understand. This is about Abhimanyu. Abhimanyu was the greatest warrior on the battlefield. He could defeat anybody. He had all weapons, all knowledge to be able to defeat all the seven people who surrounded him. He only lost that because he did not know one small thing, which was to get out of the chakra view. How do you get out of that war zone which was created by the opponent uh, uh, army, which was Ronacharya? They, they created the chakra view and, and he got caught in it. He knew how to enter the chakra view. He knew how to break it. He knew how to def uh, defeat everybody. He went to the core, but he did not know how to get, a, get out. That small aspect led to his downfall. Now, mathematically I can prove it, but don't take your eyes off for attention for details. It is extremely important. I loved what doctor and the chairman said, that the way you talk, the way you write, the way you see, the way you speak, the way you dress up, all makes a difference. And that is the attention to details. Those small aspects will be the difference between the, 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 the needle in the haystack. That will be what will separate the men from the boys as you move forward. My past, uh, my, my past friend spoke about this aspect, and this is important. Remember, the leaders of the past had characteristics which were very important, relevant for that point in time. But the leaders of the future may need different characteristics. And we've got to learn those characteristics in four and our day to day lives. The I's and the me's will have to give away to the we and the us. We used to talk about get to like minded people. I'm sure all of us while we were children, our parents used to say, you know, make friends with good, good people. Be in good company, right? Be with like minded people. Birds of feather fly together. Great principles. And I'm not saying that they're wrong. But the principles of today and beyond is about diversity and inclusion. How do you take people along with, 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 with diverse opinions? Think of playing football. Everybody is not the center forward. There's a person who can kick very well from the left. He has a place on the left flank. There's a person who kicks from the opposite leg. He has a place on the right flank. There's a person who may not know how to run and control the ball. He has the place back there in, in, in the goal but they all come together to form a winning team, which also brings me to the concept of giving away and breaking the silos for teamwork and collaboration. In large organizations, developing organizations, definitely in organizations like Microsoft, we've even given away the culture of cabins. Even the Microsoft president of India does not have a cabin. Of course, he and she or, or, or she may need a, a room in which you need to have a discussion and you can go and, and, and book a room, but you don't have cabins. Why? Because we are breaking the mental barriers of silos and getting people together. The hierarchical systems need to change to make it flat, nimble and move forward. We had the era in which IQ is extremely important, but the era of now and moving forward will be the era of EQ more than the IQ. Finally, when you start moving up, there will be people who will be throwing stones. Remember, as you go higher, there'll be people who will be jealous. There'll be people who will be envious. There'll be people who, who throw stones. But don't throw stones back at them. Climb higher, move higher, and if possible, take them along. In this entire journey, don't forget the aspects of humanity and humility and give it back to whomever you can. With this, I wish all of you the very best in life, the very best in your careers, and may you really, really soar up in whatever you're trying to do. Follow your passion. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for having me over. Thank you, sir, for your inspiring words. We are all sure to follow our hearts, get our hands dirty, and think differently and innovatively. It is our privilege to introduce our another chief guest, and our, our di distinguished alumna, Ms. Pallavi Shom. Ms. Pallavi Shom is the Chief Operating Officer of BM, BNY Mellon Technology in India. She is a, the Global Head and Strategy Vendor Partnership 
for all the BNY Mellon technology globally with teams in the US and India. In her 25 years of corporate career, she has been part of firms such as Fidelity Investments, Standard Chartered Bank PLC, and British Telecom, leading large teams. She graduated with honors in mathematical statistics from Lady Shriram College, New Delhi, and has a postgraduate diploma in business management from Four School of Management. Being a gold medalist of the 1995 batch, one can find her name etched on the wall of fame here in the corridors at four. On her personal friend, Ms. Shom is married and has one son. She is an exercise enthusiast, loves yoga and Zumba. She is trained in Hindustani classical music and can carry a tune comfortably. Let us now request Ms. Pallavi Shom to deliver her address. Thank you. Can you hear me all right? Yes, ma'am. Great. Thank you for that introduction. So, dear chairman, vice chairman, faculty members, Dr. Madhukur, uh, Dr. Das, and all the new students, um, I, I'm really privileged and humbled to address an audience at the very school that launched me into this corporate life 25 years ago. First of all, many congratulations to each one of you for having been selected at four. You know, when I think of my own commencement as a student of what was called waves at that time, so wave two, I remember feeling excited, apprehensive. You know, there was a feeling of anticipation of what the future will bring. Feelings I'm sure each one of you are going through, especially now during these unprecedented times. Um, one good thing I want to assure you about is that whether you have 25 years of experience, like someone like me, or none at all. This is new uncharted territory and um, we are all at the same juncture of learning how to cope, learning how to deal with this new environment. Nobody's seen this kind of change happen so fast and frankly it's virtually overnight and I use that word virtually of course on purpose because when I look back at some of the things that we're doing now at work you know, the operating and service models are changing, employee benefits are being relooked at, traditional concepts of work and life, uh, those are changing, home and office are blurring. In other words, these are really exciting times and new for everyone. And that's the opportunity for each one of you. You have a distinct advantage, a unique value proposition to help build these very models, to be creative, think out of the box, the possibilities are just enormous. And one thing that struck me in Dr. Madhukar's uh, address, um, and, and thank you, sir, for that. It was, it was great to hear that part, is that uh, the students are from 22 of the 29 or 30 states that we have in India today. And, um, you know, the fact that that brings in cross-cultural, innovative thinking, networking, just this whole uh, respect for diversity and inclusion you know, four is itself leading the way in being such a great citizen of India, very much like the induction oath that I heard um, a little while ago. So congratulations for that. And sir, it was it was great to to hear your thoughts on that. So, um, you know, as I was thinking of preparing for this address, I thought of these three things. You know, what are those things that uh, the mantras that I would tell my younger self uh, had I been joining with all of you today, right? Just 25 years ago. So the very first is around flexibility. You heard in my introduction about yoga. Um, it'll probably be of interest to you that I was first introduced to yoga in a mandatory class at four. And all of us used to write, you know, wine and, and always like uh, have things to say to the professor, like we can't bend, we can't do this and that. But that particular practice has carried on with me throughout my life and I haven't looked back. I practice it almost every day. And, you know, yoga sins need you to bend your body in different shapes and forms and things. But most importantly, it makes us flexible. And through the pranayams, it makes us mentally agile. It teaches us to go with the flow of life. And in this current environment of intense change, those that can adapt faster, be mentally flexible and agile are the ones who are going to really make it. You know, our mind, our thoughts, they are very powerful. And instead of dwelling on what could have been, 
um, you know, and we just stay focused on what can be where life can be full of possibility and a great opportunity. There's a beautiful quote that I'm reminded of. You know, if you change the way you see things, the things that you see change. So that's my first mantra, really. Be flexible. The second one is that one can never do it alone. Life is about teamwork. So whether it's our family, the very team that's behind us that gives us our roots and also our wings so that we can fly, whether it's our professors at four or our colleges who nudge us to think differently about concepts or later in life, you know, our managers, our leaders who inspire us to see our true potential, being grateful to these teams who are behind us, who have our back, will really open doors which we perhaps cannot see ourselves. So, you know, the second mantra really is that while one can do a lot on their own, but you can never do it alone. You need that sort of teamwork. And the third and, and the last point is somewhat related. It's about believing in yourself, but also more importantly, believing in those who believe in us. So there are, you know, over these last 25 years, there are many different roles which I have played. But I know I wouldn't be where I am today if I didn't believe in the leaders who saw in me more than I could ever could. So an example is when I was asked to head corporate communications um, uh, for the company in India at Fidelity. And according to me, I was absolutely not qualified. I was a core operations person leading large teams, very data driven. And what I thought was, hey, you know what? I can't take on such a creative communications, internal and external communication kind of pro, uh, you know, role. And you know, what's that going to do for me in my CV? Because it's such a different role. Is it going to change things for me? How will I get my new next role or job? Um, but I was pushed into the limelight and they also gave me an additional responsibility to be the, uh, the media spokesperson for the company totally out of my comfort zone, but it was just because someone saw that I could do it and I was willing to believe them that, you know, till today it remains for me a role which is one of the highlights of my career. And for those of you who've heard of Oprah Winfrey, you know, she talks about these tapes that we have in our head, you know, these tapes that tell us things like, I'm not good enough. What will people think? What if I fail? And you know, we have to be aware of this tape. We can't always stop this tape in our head, but we have to be aware of it. We need to give ourselves permission to be the best version of ourselves. So as I close today, I again, you know, extend my congratulations, my best wishes to each one of you as you commence on your learning journey at four. I had some great time, memories of learning, making some friendships that I am still with today. Um, I'm really grateful to Professor Rajneesh uh, who gave me this opportunity today to address you all. Uh, special thanks not to forget Uday and Neeraj and Kush who ensured that I could pass participate even though it meant working on Sunday, that's yesterday and ensuring that you know we had tested all of the issues that are likely to happen and fortunately happened with uh, Shamik. I'm sure we'll fix that. But as I close, I just want to thank you again for the opportunity. All the very best. Stay safe, stay well. And thank you so much for for all that you've given me. And I hope that even today I'm leading by just following the oath that I just saw after so many years um, uh, today at the program. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, ma'am, for sharing your invaluable thoughts with us and the success mantras of flexibility teamwork and belief in leaders. With that, I would now like to invite our Honorable Vice Chairman, Dr. Gautam, to deliver the vote of thanks. Before that, let me please give a brief introduction about him. Dr. Vineshir Gautam, a legend in the field of management thinking and practice, is currently the Vice Chairman of Core School of Management. Dr. Gautam was founder director of IIM Cozy Core and leader of the consulting team at IIM Shillong. He was the first head of the first Strategy Management Department at IIT Delhi in the IIT Pantheon. He has served as an ex-senior advisor to KPMG and as ex-senior managing director and principal economic advisor of the global consulting firm Protivity Member Private Limited. 
He has been advisor to several government departments, agencies, and corporations. Dr. Vineshil Gautam is a widely respected thinker and institutional builder. He has been a visiting faculty at universities of Sussex, Brunel, Dominican, Minnesota, and many others, and has delivered lectures at Cambridge University, University of London, Toronto University, University of Rock, and Duke University. He has been the visitor's nominee on the court of BHU, Academic Council of Vishwabharati, Chancellor's nominee on the University Council of Jammu, and many more. Besides this, he also serves as chairman of DK International Foundation. He has served on policy and administrative committees of Department of Personnel and Administrative Reforms, Cabinet Secretariat, Ministry of Transport and Shipping, DSP, MHRD, etc. He has also represented India on several occasions, including in activities of UNESCO, APO and at the economic conclave in Morocco. He has been closely associated with boards of various Indian and non-Indian organizations. The list includes SAIL, SpiceJet, AEC International, UTI International, Shivam Autotech, UTI AMC, Exim, JK Industries, HZL, Lake Palace Hotels and Motels, Gale and Mumbai Port Trust. He has authored and or edited over two dozen books and over 150 papers several of which are award winning. He's a widely sought after man uh, because he's an impact making consultant. Sensibly traveled and internationally celebrated, Dr. Gotham's contribution to learning, training and strategic thinking is an indicator of both his range and depth. His many fellowships, including that of Royal Asiatic Society London, Association of Business Executives UK and ARTDO International Manila and Lifetime Achievement Awards are a unique contribution to his accomplishments. Dr. Gotham enjoys pushing the boundaries, facing probing explorations of his thinking process and redeeming his work. May I please request you, sir, to propose the vote of thanks. So we are off to a right start. When I was requested to be the sixth speaker in a panel of such distinguished uh, achieving professionals, I was really wondering what to say till Sangapriya, uh, Sangamitra got uh, into a rescue board and he said and she told me why don't you talk of the mindset which the students would bring to the class and through the learning process so i dedicate that perspective to the chairman the director the distinguished guests of this evening and uh, what is it that i have to add to what has been covered so competently so comprehensively and in such a complete manner so let's begin at the beginning the chairman has rightly pointed out the representation we have from 22 states. Let me add my happy tepany bit and mention that of the total composition and there are 360 plus people joining us now. The gender ratio is 38% women and 62% male. So we are getting there. In one of my past institutions, we had mandated a certain kind of reservation for women, and that made huge waves, not always positive ones, but four has obviously surpassed that in its own way, and we intend to keep that as a part of our diversity in the classroom. We have students with work experience, and they constitute about 33%. The composition is from Bachelor of Arts, Bachelors of Science, Bachelors of Commerce, Bachelors of Engineering, Bachelors of Technology, BBAs and BCAs, and Bachelors, of course, in Hotel Management, Journalism, Mass Communication, Pharmacy. I find it necessary to say that because we believe that learning is a continuous process of which teachers are an important and a central component, but a lot of learning is at a peer level. And this is a fundamental distinguishing trait of four. The chairman has talked of the origins of four in his usual insightful manner. I would again like to build upon what he has said to mention that the four school of management is a relatively later initiative of the Foundation for Organizational Research and Education, which was initially conceived as a research oriented coming together of individuals. And as the chairman rightly said, not just one promoter, but who felt that research in organization matters is the core of management progress. And years later, they wanted to convert that into a teaching mode, and that's how the four school of management began. And I think four is one of those very rare institutions in the country which has rightly 
got as a precursor activity of research before getting into teaching and that i think is a very distinguishing characteristic of research of uh, four i have a, a set of uh, thoughts to share not about the cursive manner in which our distinguished guests have talked and rightly so nor indeed what the director has expounded as the philosophy and the architecture of what they are going to do but to focus on you the participant and tell you what my experience across at least four continents has shown to me the common factor about all learners of management at your level of the career my first submission is management is not a classroom activity it is a process of self learning where classroom inputs are one input and management is really an attempt to make sure you go to a classroom prepared you pose the questions there very often in an applied mode and draw upon the rich experiences of the faculty to understand how the real world works in other words very simply and i find it worthwhile to quote indian authors just as much as i think western authors should be quoted be it vikram sarabhai or be it kabla choudhury they maintain that management is the making of a practitioner if you can't put your learning to work you are not a management man whatever else you may be therefore to the group of students who are joining the four family today let me submit ultimately the test of the pudding is in the eating and the taste here is how well you can practice what you have said uh, shamik has talked of uh, the approach of microsoft with whom i have had with the institution i have had a lot to do in terms of research collaboration when i was a senior managing director of productivity be it bhaskar prabhanik or even kabir who still maintains that relationship with me one of the reasons why microsoft did so well is to look at research in an applied mode similarly uh, pallavi talked of the kind of orientation and the holistic development which he took away as one of the takeaways from four education and it was music to my ears to hear that physical education spiritual education you name it and it that's the making of a composite personality i don't have too much to add over and beyond what has already been said other than make three considerations for your attention first is you will have to recognize that the curriculum need not necessarily follow 100% point for point what is listed in the syllabus because of my nearly 50 years of professional life 34 have been sent, spent in an academic environment the last post being emeritus chair professor at iit delhi and i noticed that in the ultimate analysis it is uh, the sort of approach which you have in understanding the current management issues which matters one of the courses which i used to teach was management of telecom engineering systems and i noticed that even as the course rolled on many of the regulations changed so i cannot tell my students that look this is not in the syllabus but this is a change therefore putting a question on this in the examination is it out of course or is it inside course management teaching doesn't run that way and my my experience is at least 30% of the course in management of telecom engineering systems changed over as limited a period as 15 weeks because we were talking of international telecom management the covid era has already been referred to and every day is changing the regulatory system every day is changing the nature of the labor availability every day is affecting management of finance and i might say every day is a new day i was wondering what i could tell you something as you will remember over your two years and i got hold of a quotation from a latin american environment and the author of it is pema shodon and i read out to you as i got it it reads the navajo teach their children that every morning when the sun comes up it's a brand new sun it is born each morning it lives for the duration of one day 
and in the evening it passes on never to return again. As soon as the children are old enough to understand and the emphasis on the, on the word understand, as soon as they are old enough to understand, the adults take them out at dawn and they say, the sun has only one day. You must live this day in a good way so that the sun won't have wasted precious time. Acknowledging the preciousness of each day is a good way to live, a good way to reconnect with our basic joys. I have no time for depression. If I had time for depression, I would have no time to live because with all these active years in the corporate world, in the government, in the academia and elsewhere, one can only go back to Harwan Shrai Bachchan's mega autobiography where one of the volumes is called Kya Bhoolu Kya Yaad Karu. So there is no time to assess while you live. Be concerned with living itself. And that's all I got to say because you will find, as the director has rightly indicated, it's a hybrid method. Hybrid method hasn't been perfected in the curriculum yet. At the moment, we have this online method. This is the first time in four we are having an online induction program. Who knows, this may be the precursor of many other unique activities to come. So learn to live life at different levels. There is no more advisory to give because uh, I have been brought up by two daughters and they're not kids running around town. One of them is 40, the other is 36. And their generation taught me, Daddy, keep the gyan to yourself. We have no time for gyan. Libraries are full of it. If there is something which you want to share out of your experience, we are willing to look at that. Your generation, your way of learning, your approach to life is unique because there are families where I've taught four generations, the great grandfather, the grandfather, the father and the son, and the range varies from 74 to 16. So once you get invited to a family dinner, you can imagine the range you meet from. So there is no gyan I have got to give. I did talk to the director what he wanted me to say in vote of thanks. Now I can hardly go back to the chairman and say, thank you so much for coming here and showing us the way. It's his institution, he is the head. Nor can I thank the director. And indeed, if you ask me, I don't feel like thanking Sh Shamik or Pallavi. They are one of us. All I can say is well done. I hope the rest of you will grow up into more of Shamiks and more of Pallavis. There is no scope of vote of thanks. We have just begun the journey. I have nothing more to offer that I'll walk with you every step. And this is a place where the chairman is happy to propose the vote of thanks, where the director delivers the inaugural address. So that is the spirit in which we get into. Welcome. The best is yet to come. Happy journey. Bye for now. Thank you so much, sir, for proposing such a wonderful vote of thanks. It was indeed very motivational and inspiring. We would like to express our heartfelt gratitude to our distinguished alumni, chairman, vice chairman, director and dean academics for gracing the event. We would also like to thank the faculty, staff members and all others who directly or indirectly contributed to making this event possible. To conclude with the words of Michelle Obama from her book Becoming. You may not always have a comfortable life and you will not always be able to solve the world's problems at once. But don't ever underestimate the importance you can have because history has shown us that courage can be contagious and hope can take on a life of its own. We wish you the badge of 2022 all the best for the exciting, rewarding, challenging and stimulating time at our institute. It is the beginning of what we hope to be the lifelong experience and engagement as member of Ford School of Management. Before we conclude for the day, we request you all to rise for the national anthem. जनगण मन अधिनायक जय हे भारत भाग्य विधाता पंजाब सिंध गुजरात मराठा द्राविड उत्कल बंगा विंध्य हिमाचल यमुना गंगा उच्चल जलधि तरंगा तव शुभ नामे जागे तव शुभ आशीष मागे गाहे तव जय गाथा 
ಜನಗಣ ಮಂಗಳದಾಯಕ ಜಯ ಹೇ ಭಾರತ ಭಾಗ್ಯ ವಿಧಾತ ಜಯ ಹೇ ಜಯ ಹೇ ಜಯ ಹೇ ಜಯ 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 ಹೇ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಎವ್ರಿ ಒನ್ ಫಾರ್ ಯುವರ್ ಸ್ಟೀಮ್ ಪ್ರೆಸೆನ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಬೀಂಗ್ ಸಚ್ ಅ ವಂಡರ್